Today I'll tell you why you should ditch your old hang on the back filter and pick up one of these newfangled canister filters. Join me for the next installment of Science Alliance. Hey folks, Nick Mock 007 here again this week for Science Alliance. Now, remember the rules of engagement are that I'll present one side of an issue, but to see the other side and get a balanced view, uh, you'll have to go check out my counterpart in Science Alliance, Cam. Uh, all the information will be in the description below. After you watch both sides, then you should have the information to make up your own mind. So remember, today my job is to convince you to use a canister filter not to provide you a full uh, of a full view of the can uh, the filter uh, uh, issue, and of course we're not even going to look at wet dry filters or sumps, uh, though maybe in the future. And as always, if you have ideas for any topics you'd like to see us cover, uh, email us. Our emails in the description below, or post a comment. Uh, that works just as well. Also, please do take a second to do the poll we set up. We always think it's pretty nifty to see what we're all doing. Uh, so we have a really short poll associated with Science Alliance videos. Now, don't be a square, fill out the poll and be part of the community. All the cool kids are doing it. Now, here's the benefit of doing these polls, the results. So in the last video, I asked you about who is using dirt as a substrate. To the question of who currently uses dirt uh, in a planted tank, 55.6% of you said yes. And to the question of have you ever tried dirt or will you try it in the future, Actually, 72.7% of you said yes. So it looks like I'm not the only one around here who likes to play dirty. But to the other 27.3% of you yellow bellies who haven't tried dirt, uh, come see what you're missing. Now, on guard and on to the debate. So today I'm going to answer the age-old question of paper or plastic. Uh, no, wait, that's for my other YouTube channel. Uh, for this episode of Science Alliance, uh, we're going to try to convince you about the best kind of filter to run. A quick disclaimer though, both Cam and I are planted tank guys. So I'm going to be convincing you to use a canister while Cam wastes his breath trying to convince you to use a hang on the back or HOB. Uh, notice how it's only one letter off from SOB? Remember. So I'm going to present you with a lot of information about why I think you should use a canister filter. But first let me speak to the reason many, many people use a canister. It speaks to the shallow part in all of us. Looks. Because every girl is crazy about a sharp-dressed tank. Now, I may try to put it more eloquently, but I think the sentiment from uh, one forum post hits home, and I, and I quote here, because you don't have a butt-ugly filter hanging off the back of your super-slick-looking rimless tank. Checkmate, Cam. Uh, but more to the point, if you can get the, the hang-on on the back off your tank and have no obstructions in the background, the beauty of your tank is just further enhanced, especially if you use lily pipes. They almost disappear when done right. Now, couple that with the fact that you can plumb in uh, even more accessories, such as heaters and CO2 diffusers. You can even get more equipment out of your tank and just enjoy the beauty of your plants and fish. In fact, uh, some canister filters even have UV uh, heaters, you know, things like that built right in. All in all, you get a closer true to, uh, you know, true slice of nature in your, your very own tank. Okay, now that's all just superficial, though. Uh, I still think as much as we pretend like we don't care about it, uh, I know better. But let's hit you with some indisputable facts now. With all that equipment hidden, you're, you, know, you need less room behind your tank. And of course that's nice, though, unless your room is really tight, uh, that probably is not that beneficial. Now what I should have done is start out the video with probably the most important fact. Canisters typically have considerably more volume for filtration media. Uh, so that means better filtration, but more importantly, it means more surface area for, and, and you know, in the case of a planted tank, beneficial bacteria. So in canisters, because you have so much more room, you can customize your filtration. If you're not interested in lots of bio, uh, uh, biological filtration, you can throw in more pads, sponges, chemical filtration, or like I do, just tons of biological filtration. So this is important because your filtration needs may vary depending on the kind of tank you're, uh, you're running. So, uh, you know, what's great is that you can use whatever you want, but more of it. And more is always better. At least that's the motto here in the uh, good old US of A. But in all seriousness, this makes the gallon per hour argument of hang on the backs meaningless. Even if HOBs have equal or better flow, 
the water is flowing through less mechanical, less chemical, and less biological media. You know, that would be like saying your 500 gallon, uh, you know, per hour wave maker filters better than my 400 gallon per hour canister. Balderdash, I say. All right, back to some serious business. With canisters, doing water changes can be easier. Uh, a lot of the canisters, you can actually just disconnect the output and use the canister's pump to uh, uh, actively drain water to the sink or out the door. Can't do that with any HOB. Another great thing, especially if you have a significant other who isn't into the aquarium hobby, is that canisters tend to be quieter. Uh, not to say that HOBs can't run quiet, but with canisters, since the motors are below the tank, uh, presumably in a closed cabinet of some kind, uh, any noise is even further dampened. Now, with a canister, another customizable option is the intake and output. Uh, you can separate them, uh, you can put them wherever you want, you can keep them all well hidden, and you know we can get them set up to uh, best improve the flow through your tank. Additionally, you can customize the output, uh, change the direction of the flow, use a spray bar, or whatever else you can come up with. You can also increase or decrease surface agitation depending on what best suits your needs, which is of particular importance if you're injecting CO2, like most of us who run planted tanks. Now, compared to HOBs, canisters, when correctly set up, will outgas actually less CO2 than their counterparts. Now, of course, canisters are big and they can take up more room, but because they hold such large amounts of media, you can typically go much longer between cleanings. Now, while it's not recommended by the manufacturer, I know people who only clean their canisters once every six months or less. And when you do have to clean them, I think they're easier to clean. You just disconnect the fittings, usually some kind of quick disconnect, and then cart the whole thing off to the kitchen sink or the backyard patio or, or your bathtub, whatever you like. Now, no need to reach behind the tank and try to get the HOB off while, you know, not sloshing water everywhere. Hey, Japs, did you know that surface scum or biofilms can form in any tank? Uh, but the surface agitation that I mentioned not that long ago really actually helps cut down on this, and that gives uh, the canisters another notch in the old belt. Now, I know some of you are thinking, but my tank is too small. I don't need the raw, unfettered V8 horsepower that is a canister. Well, there's, in fact, a few different models designed for tanks even under 10 gallons, so don't over overlook these awesome filters even for nano tanks. But what about the elephant in the room? Cost. Now, while true you may have to get a second mortgage on your home to pick up an Eheim or a Fluval, uh, several companies make great canisters that are much more reasonably priced. So uh, check out Marineland, API, Zoomed, Sunsun, Aquatop, Rena, just to name a few. All of these can be had for prices pretty comparable to HOBs. So if you're not convinced, then I'll play my trump card. Have you ever seen the latest Mac Pro, lovingly referred to as the trash can? Well, maybe you can't afford one of those, but pick up the right canister filter slap an Apple logo on it and bam, I filter pro. Okay, so hopefully now I've already convinced you to use a canister filter, but please do go check out the other half of this video on Cam's channel. Uh, remember, I gave you a really one-sided presentation and if you're actually considering getting a new HOB or canister filter, then you really need to know both sides. Spend your money wisely. Remember, send us an email if you have topics you want us to cover, and please vote in that poll. It'll really take you about 10 seconds. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, but feel free to hit the dislike button, uh, especially if you don't like eye filters and prefer to use the Android uh, banana split filter. Uh, I haven't mentioned it in a while, but I really do read and answer all comments, so uh, you know, let us know what you think. If you want to stay up to date with my channel, including the Science Alliance series, uh, make sure you're subscribed to both me and Cam. And remember, vote in the poll, or the ghost of Sieb Jobs will haunt you down for laughing at that tasteless eye filter pro joke. Uh, see you in the next one.